the city's health director is calling these illnesses an outbreak. And the CDC is reporting at least 33 states and the U.S. Virgin Islands have cases of this severe lung illness directly tied to vaping. We were hoping to be able to kick this can down the road a little bit longer until we've done episodes that were a little more fun. But recently, the Trump administration has talked of banning e-cigarette products, so we got to do this now. Thanks, Obama. Now, the catalyst for this episode was Trump's recent announcement of banning some tobacco products that are used electronically. But we're hoping that people aren't going to line up on this issue according to their love or hatred for our president. I vape, and I plan to keep vaping regardless of whatever law is passed. I just prefer to not have to go to five points to get my stuff. Have to start packing heat to protect myself against feral juice junkies. What is vaping? Vaping is an electronic substitute for smoking cigarettes. Vaping devices take a current from a battery and heat a coil that is cotton wrapped around it that is saturated with e-liquid. Vaping products include vaping mods like the one I use, vape pens where you can refill the juice, and e-cigarettes that you buy cartridges for. The e-liquid is made up of vegetable glycerine, propylene glycol, nicotine, and non-oil food grade flavoring. Vegetable glycerin is made from plant oils such as soy, coconut, or palm oils. And it's also used in cosmetics and in food products as a sweetener or preservative. Propylene glycol is made from propylene oxide, a petroleum product, and is also used in laser printers, food production, and antifreeze. Yes, a recent stink wafted through the lowest rungs of scientific ludite debate across mommy blogs and Facebook comment sections because an ingredient in antifreeze also appears in countless other products that go in your mouth, among other places. This is similar to the yoga mat chemical, as a dicarbonamide, that was also used in Subway breads. And not to put too fine a point on it, but if you don't understand the difference between an ingredient having more than one use and an ingredient being the thing it's used to make, the rest of my arguments here are going to go way over your head. There aren't yoga mats in Subway breads, there isn't antifreeze in your cake mix, there's water in nuclear reactors, but that doesn't mean you get radiation poison from drinking Evian. <clears throat> Both vegetable glycerin and propylene glycol are rated safe to use by the FDA in food products. And though a product made from petroleum, propylene glycol is safe enough that it's actually used in artificial tears. You can put it on your eyeballs. As for the effects of atomized inhalation, the Journal of Pharmacology and Experimental Therapeutics published a three-month study on chain-smoking chimps that concluded that... The results of these experiments, in conjunction with the absence of any observed ill effects in patients exposed to propylene glycol vapors for months at a time, provide assurance that air containing these vapors in amounts up to the saturation point is completely harmless. Nicotine is not without its health risks, but they are well within what adults are willing to assume from caffeine, alcohol, and late night talk shows. Nicotine is most harmful because it is addictive, so the method for consuming nicotine matters more than the nicotine itself. Nicotine is not a carcinogen. Play that back if you need to hear it again. Nicotine does not cause cancer at all, ever. The dangers from smoking don't come from the nicotine, they come from the particulate matter. The smoke, tar, ammonia, and other byproducts of burning leaf tobacco. Whereas the byproduct of vaping is mere water vapor. The UN estimates that 1.6 million people in the third world die each year from inhaling indoor smoke from wood-burning stoves and kettles. And that smoke doesn't even contain nicotine. Smoke is no joke. The inhalation effects of every single flavoring on the market is not well known, but all used are considered food safe by the FDA. Some time ago, diacetyl, a buttery flavoring, was suspected of causing popcorn lung. This disease is called popcorn lung not because any growths resembling popcorn began appearing in vapor's lungs, but because in the year 2000, Eight microwave popcorn factory workers were found to have the disease, and diacetyl is among the ingredients in their microwave popcorn. Diacetyl was not, and has never been shown to have been the cause of the popcorn lung in those eight factory workers. So did anyone who vaped e-liquids with diacetyl, including myself, get popcorn lung? No, not one. But you probably have heard of people recently getting sick from using vaping products. The FDA is investigating 380 specific reports of people having seizures that may be related to vaping. That may sound bad, but since Magic Fingers beds have disappeared from motels across the country, sometimes I like to just sit back and have myself a nice vape and a seizure to unwind after a long day. Okay, so six people have died too. Increasingly, investigators are finding that most are admitting to having used illegal products, specifically an illicit brand called Dank Vapes. 
containing THC and also vitamin E acetate, a thickening agent that is not safe to inhale and has been linked to lipoid pneumonia. And this is kind of the point. An illegal manufacturer of a product sold illicitly on the streets and in back alleys cannot be held legally accountable by its customers. Legal e-liquid and vaping product manufacturers can be sued if their products harm their customer. By banning vaping products or even just the vaping products that customers want to purchase, those consumers will be forced to buy from illegal manufacturers who can and will put potentially harmful ingredients in their products with impunity. The CDC is interested in curbing electronic tobacco due almost entirely to its use by adolescents. Nicotine stunts the developing adolescent brain, like drinking coffee or watching PewDiePie. But for whatever point I might see about the bright colored packaging and fruity flavors, Dr. Tim McAfee, director of the CDC's Office on Smoking and Health's criticism of a pervasive culture of mass advertising vaping, falls flat for me. I've never seen anyone vape on TV or in movies, nor any commercials for vaping products on television, and besides channels about vaping on YouTube, the only advertising you might see is a billboard for your local vape shop. Episodes of Family Guy and South Park, each of whom has shown pro-smoking imagery in their shows, both panned vaping as lame. It's one of the few things they agree on. I'm a douchebag! I've vaped for three and a half years, and the only place I'm advertised vaping products to is inside the vape shops I buy from. But the... Won't somebody please think of the children? ...argument is hollow and vacuous. It's the same argument they make about everything from violent video games to pornography. We have no right to remove things from the legal economic marketplace because some people can't control their kids. I mean, this is how we got apple slices on our Happy Meals. And honestly, if your teenager doesn't rely on an allowance because he has a part-time job after school and can afford to buy vaping products secondhand from an older friend who could buy them legally, maybe he's old enough to make his own decisions about how to spend his money. Some are worried that while being a useful off-ramp for adults who want to quit smoking, vaping could be the on-ramp for younger people to begin smoking to satisfy their nicotine demands that are created by vaping. But vaping isn't just safer. It's a more desirable nicotine delivery system all around. There's no smoker's cough, no bad breath, your clothes don't reek, and you can vape indoors in some places where you can't smoke. Anyone who goes from vaping to smoking is basically saying that they like nicotine, but prefer to smell bad and get winded going up a flight of stairs. And so we don't recommend vaping to anyone who doesn't already smoke. It's not super fun time yum yum magic balls, it's a nicotine delivery system. If you don't need nicotine, don't vape. You wouldn't chew nicotine gum instead of Big Red. Vaping was invented to solve a problem. Don't adopt that problem for yourself just for funsies. Young people should definitely be discouraged from vaping, but adults who are trying to use it to quit should be encouraged far more by polite society than they are. Workplaces should offer spaces indoors for vapors. All bars should allow it, and it should be allowed inside airports for people who have delayed flights and layovers without having to go through security again. Public Health England published a study in 2015 saying that vaping is about 95% safer than smoking. This is a problem because all of the bad information on display in the media is telling the opposite story, with surveys from tobacco products and risk perception surveys and health information national trends surveys showing that as of 2017, over half of all surveyed people believed e-cigarettes are as dangerous as smoking or worse, up threefold from the same survey in 2012. This isn't just a media failure, as those surveyed who may have been smokers are disinclined to switch to something that is 95% safer for them. As those smokers are scared away from a safer alternative, and our healthcare system is burdened with more cases of lung cancer, heart disease, emphysema, and stroke that could have been prevented, the way our culture and government has chosen to treat vaping may end up being the greatest public policy disaster of our time. So can the FDA just decide to ban flavored e-cigarettes on their own without Congress passing a law? The FDA is a federal agency. They don't just write new laws into existence, do they? Well, basically. In 2009, a Democrat-controlled Congress passed the Family Smoking Prevention and Tobacco Control Act and signed into law by then-President Obama that gave the FDA the ability to regulate tobacco products, except for the ones already on the market at the time, which included cigars, cigarettes, chewing tobacco, snuff, and tobacco leaves processed for use in pipes and hookahs. The definition of tobacco products was expanded in 2016 to include anything with nicotine, which is derived from tobacco. 
The FDA can't touch the ones that were grandfathered in, but new products such as vape devices, they can regulate them as they see fit, including banning flavors it believes appeals to minors. And now Trump's FDA is applying the bureaucratic power it was given under the 2009 Tobacco Control Act. Now, I'm not cynical enough to suggest the 2009 Act nor the Trump FDA is intending to help big tobacco companies by eliminating competition, but that is the practical effect of these measures. Let this be a lesson to those who want to use the levers of the federal government to remake the world according to their immediate whims and fancies. Because whether it's banning plastic straws to save the environment, or banning flavored vape products to save the children, you never know what might be on the chopping block next. Thanks for checking out our channel. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you can find out when we have new episodes released. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and our podcast is now available on both Stitcher and Apple Podcasts.